don't deserve to be my son. Could you kill someone you love? Some say you're not a real killer till you do. Who could have won? I don't know. And then what happened? You know, the easiest way to sneak up on your enemies is to make them think that they already won. You know, the easiest way to sneak upon your enemies is to make them think that they already won. Those were the words of Kanan who taught young Tariq just like he did Ghost, and both Ghost and Tariq had one thing in common, they both screwed Kanan. Kanan being in prison for 10 years felt betrayed by Ghost who took his organisation and built upon what Kanan started. Kanan taught Ghost and Tommy the ropes as they initially started as lookouts. Kanan brought them in and taught them the way of the streets just like how he was taught by Scrappy, Breeze and Raquel and probably more mentors along the way that we'll see through our Power Book 3 raising Kanan. But the journey of Kanan Stark which we knew began with him wanting Ghost dead before he got out of prison, hiring Pink Sneakers the female assassin from Miami and his plan was to take back everything he believed to be his. Being 3 moves ahead he planned almost everything to perfection. I want Ghost dead before I get out. Those were the words of Kanan as he felt betrayed by Ghost. The journey of Kanan began with him plotting his way back by manipulating Ghost Ghost to take out one of his most loyal men in Roller. He was the original chess player and by having Ghost take out Roller, the head of the RSKs, this gave Kanan the upper hand just before he was released from prison because he knew Ghost still trusted him. Trust in power is dangerous to have because we know this can be flipped in a heartbeat. Law 2 of the 48 laws of power even tell you to never put too much trust in your friends and this was Ghost's real first mistake but Kanan's first real play, setting certain things in motion for when he was eventually released from prison. His second came with the manipulation of his own son, first manipulating him to making sure that he kept Kanan's secret, that he was out of prison and this allowed Kanan to plan and make moves that Ghost wouldn't see coming. Kanan was a master at concealing his intentions. He knew that failing to kill Ghost while he was in prison meant it was impossible for him to kill Ghost while he was out because it would create a war with Tommy within seconds. So instead he decided to attack from the inside because this was his drug business. Tommy and Ghost made all this success at the expense of Kanan. So killing the RSKs and giving Ghost a real problem because he'd just taken a boatload of product from Felipe Lobos, he had no choice but to give Kanan the RSK's territory. Also with Tommy's blessing because Kanan knew he was the weakling. He wouldn't dare ask Ghost how business was but the minute he asked Tommy he told Kanan about the problems with the RSK's and Tommy told Ghost that they needed to bring Kanan on board. Posing as a friend and working as a spy, Kanan introduced himself to Tommy and Ghost when they were at the most vulnerable in season 2 episode 2 and while Ghost was too busy chasing pink sneakers to find out who really hired her, Kanan was already 3 moves ahead by working the angle with Tommy and having Dre kill her because he'd found out from Tommy where Ghost was leading him to pink sneakers. This wasn't the only thing Kanan put in motion because he disappeared for a large part of season 2. Returning in episode 8 and in a conversation with Dre, he said they were 3 moves ahead of Ghost because he had a revolt going on with Ruiz and the Primeras. Gathering Ruiz, Dre, Drifty, Vladimir, Kanan's plan was to meet Lobos and tell him that Tommy and Ghost had lost control of their entire organisation and now they follow Kanan. All Kanan needed to do was meet Lobos because Lobos was planning to kill Tommy and Ghost anyway and Kanan would have been the new distro, the head of the organisation that he was before Ghost. If it wasn't for Ghost setting up Lobos and Tommy to be arrested, then this could have transpired to be a little different. But with Ghost still alive and breathing, Kanan needed Sean's help in killing Ghost. The problem here was Sean wasn't built for the streets, the same way Zeke isn't built for the streets in Power Book 2 Ghost. Sean could never kill his uncle G, and Kanan showing his ruthlessness just like he did with Brock earlier in the season, except taking it one step further killing his own son. In Kanan's words, you ain't a real killer till you kill someone you love. Now I doubt he had much love for Sean anyway, but he definitely had love for someone that he killed in the past. I'm sure something that we'll see play out in Power Book 3 Raising Kanan, who he killed that he loved, we'll have to wait and see. But these two kills in Season 2 of Power just showed how much of a ruthless character we were witnessing on Power. Teaching Dre how to keep his soldiers in and crew in line and killing his own son Sean which struck fear into Dre. His fight with Ghost was a pinnacle of power but one he lost but also 
also one he used to his advantage later on, returning because at that point goes Tommy and Tasha all thought Kanan was dead until he returned as Slim, giving Kanan the upper hand once again. This is when we were introduced to another ruthless character and that's Jukebox. His relationship with Jukebox is something I'm excited to see in Power Book 3 raising Kanan and especially Jukebox character as a whole because from what we saw of her in season 3 really showed us how much of a cold hearted and ruthless character she was and the conversation she had with Kanan shows their relationship goes way back as they confided in each other until Jukebox left to become a police officer and we all know how Kanan feels about them and we all know how the relationship with Jukebox ended with Kanan sending three bullets straight into Jukebox's chest after she kidnapped Tariq and this was Kanan killing his own son that he'd grown up with to save Tariq. It just shows how fond he grew of Tariq so let's talk about Kanan and Tariq's relationship next. Posing as slim, Kanan's original intention was to kill Tariq to get back at Ghost until he realised how much Tariq resented his father so instead he decided to take him under his wing and teach him the game he once taught Ghost. We also found out this apartment belongs to Breeze as Kanan told Tariq the old story of how Breeze used to be tough but not smart. He had the same routine every day where he'd come home and watch Jeopardy at 7pm and that's when Ghost came in and shot Breeze in the back of the head. Kanan eventually thought Tariq has more of a son than he did Sean, admitting to Tariq that he'd killed Sean because he was soft not like Tariq. They grew a real bond with Tariq saying that he was the only one who really cared for Kanan, probably why he appeared in Tariq's hallucinations just before he shot and killed Ghost because they both shared the same resent for his father Ghost and they both shared the same vision, they both wanted him dead. Kanan told Tariq that he'd been doing him proud and if he was the one to pull the trigger on Ghost, he'll never see it coming, just like how Kanan didn't see it coming when Tariq played him. Kanan was used in the laws of power where he'd use others to do the work for him and getting others to play the cards that he dealt. Kanan who ultimately had the end goal of killing Ghost got the sweetest of revenge by using his own son Tariq to kill him. I really wouldn't be surprised to see Kanan if he was the real person who manipulated Ghost into killing Breeze as well because after all Kanan was next in line to take over the business. Kanan Stark was the ultimate chess player and even when working with Ghost and Tommy for a short period of time in during season 5 of Power, he always had his own agenda and that was to take Tommy's position as distro for Jason Mitchich, taking Diego Jimenez's head to Jason telling him that Ghost and Tommy will take each other around leaving him free to take control over Tommy's organisation. Something that didn't quite play out the way Kanan wanted because he was set up by Tariq knowing that Kanan lives and dies by the streets and he'd go down fighting but his prophecy of Ghost and Tommy trying to kill each other did come true in season 6 as the two brothers did try and finally kill each other and if Kanan was still around he probably would have used this to his advantage to take them both out. Kanan Stark was the ultimate chess player and teacher because all of Ghost's ideas came from Kanan but as the saying goes there are no friends in the streets and for Kanan to keep calm and collected over the years he was in prison to strike Ghost at the perfect time requires patience, power and the right chess moves. He bought his time but just falling short of winning. You could however argue that Kanan really did win in the end because Ghost was killed and Kanan pushed Tariq into resenting his father so much he was the one that pulled the trigger on Ghost but there is still so much we need to learn about why Kanan was this smart and strategic strategic and this is something we'll see transpire through Power Book 3 raising Kanan. But drop me your thoughts down below in the comment section of Kanan's backstory from what we know so far and what do we expect from him in Power Book 3 raising Kanan. And of course if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Universe related. But thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.